oil painting good and bad. Oh my god, Amaranth. I mean, I was gonna do obviously uh, Midnight Lands, but good and bad. I don't know if I'm skilled enough at oil painting to do good and bad yet. Uh, you can hear the music, right? I will put on Good and Red. Maybe Good and Red make it a theory. I love the hue ever on it. That's a really great idea. Yeah. What if I start with the instrumental version of Good and Red and then move on to the version with words? What do you think about that? Is it still on repeat one? Okay. Ooh. I just have to remember to drink my coffee and not the odorless solvent. Good morning. Yes, good morning to you too. I walked into the kitchen this morning and Dilly the new cat was just laying by the table, spilling out. Um, and then he ran away when he saw me, which was so sad for, for me, because I wanted to pet him. I'm Dilly! Yes. Okay. So I think I'm going to start with a blue-toned canvas. And I think I'm going to do it all in blue and white, even though I have some yellow and red. When it was going to be Midnight Land, I was going to do a lot of purple. But, uh, oh, how is the, um, how's the mix? You can hear me and the music, or if the music's too loud, or, like, uh, let me know. Okay, I can't wait to see what you do. Oh, okay. Blue and white, it is. Yes, everything is good. All right, awesome. Good morning to you, Amaron. What are you doing away so early? Let's make it so you can see the mixing of the colors. And... <sighs> All right, so we're gonna start with blue. I should really be doing this with a palette knife, but I just, I can't. I'm just not a palette knife kind of person. I have been awake this early for a while. Is that why you always like are sleeping right before D&D &D in the afternoons? Because you need a nap. I understand that. I guess mixing colors would probably be easier with a real palette and not a leftover plate from your uncle. Like this plate is from when your uncle used to live in this house and that was whenever it was. Yeah, that's why you're always kind of napping. All right, well, I'm good. I would get a bigger plate. Yeah. I have, I, I had, why don't, where is my other plate? Oh, this is my other plate. It's covered in gouache. That's why I'm not using it <clears throat> for mixing. Um, I wonder if we have other, another plate in the cabinet. Oh, we have another plate. I had been using these, oh, that was so much noise. I had been using these plates for cat food, but I don't, I think oil painting is, I feel like I've made like a real black by mixing that. <clears throat> I can't order a full bread yet because it's not September and I have to wait until I get paid to buy a cold red. Um, so mixing in my warm red with the blue makes sort of like a almost black brown instead of a pickle. <laughs> Let's just take some pocket gel and spin this out a little bit in case I want to paint over it later. <sighs> 
So you remember how Bob Ross used to say a thin paint will always stick to a thick paint? It's true, but if you paint a thin oil paint over a thick oil paint before the thick oil paint has dried, the thin oil paint will dry, but the thick oil paint will not, and then your whole painting will fall apart. Oh, hey, I had you on repeat one, my dude. That's not cool. All right, there we go. Okay. You can see the canvas. I'm about to get started. This is the Good in Red by the Midnight Instrumental Vibe Painting. I think I'm being distracted by the fact that I washed this painting diagonally. <laughs> like, I want to make diagonal lines. Rude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited, too. I'm just so nervous that I'm not going to do justice to the song. Follow your heart. Yeah, me and the Care Bears. I'm trying. I'm just, it's just hard. Uh, called a curse in the cradle. Loving mother, unstable. Daddy gone under the table. But you found the song. If you don't do it right the first time, make a new one. You sound like my therapist. No, you're right. You are you are completely right. And actually I your progression did some yeah. Yesterday um, in therapy we talked about doing a bigger canvas and a more complicated uh, painting that has a lot of layers and taking a picture of every layer so that you can watch the progression of the layers which I thought was like a really interesting technique right it does sound awesome it's about like watching yourself grow you know and watching your decisions and like my, my therapist does this great thing where they tell me sort of like the therapy theory behind everything that they suggest as therapy um, because they know that otherwise I get stressed out. But like if I'm doing something for the therapy theory, it's less stressful than just trying to make art. Okay, I see that there's paint on this brush. And I want it to be on the canvas for the mixing. Alright. Last night I was playing Chord Keeper. And um, Emma Jean Joy, who followed me last night, thank you, Emma, um, came and asked what I was listening to and um, it was Jason by The Midnight and Nikki Flores. And I was like, this is The Midnight and they're so awesome. And then I thought about you, Amaranis, because never would have heard them if it wasn't for you. And now they're like one of my favorite bands. Easily one of my favorite bands. I am so glad. Yes, you should be. You did your duty as a baby as a sibling. I thought you would really like them. You were so right. This kind of looks like intestines, and I didn't mean for it to look like intestines. You made fun of me when I first made you listen to them. I remember. I was like, oh, like saxophones. Oh, 
But you know what? Um, I'm glad that you made me listen to that because... What? I said repeat one. I don't understand. What is wrong with Spotify today? Okay, I don't like that this looks like intestines. So actually, I'm going to paint this whole canvas in this dark color and then set it aside. <clears throat> and let the dark color dry. I think this will probably come back to this with some Barnes Courtney. In the dark, in the dark, in the dark. And, uh, or maybe we'll come back to it. I got a bunch of questions. My fault for not. Let's get some orange. But it's not like with um, like watercolor where thinning your paint completely changes the color and then suddenly you're using a totally different color than what you meant to. So Amaranis, tell me, are you going to eat something delicious for breakfast today and be prepared for... Yeah. Yeah, you're eating something delicious for breakfast or yeah, you understand what I'm talking about about the color. Thinning. Can you see my canvas? The color, okay. You know, what's interesting about, so, you know, I took the performance art class and it's over now, thank God, because I hated that teacher. But what was interesting was that it made me realize how much of what I do is often performance art or would be considered performance art if I were an artist. Like streaming, especially because I paint differently when it's on stream versus when it's just me by myself in the kitchen. I 
hold the brush differently. I hold the canvas differently. Everything's different. It was just like an interesting thought experiment about whether streaming is streaming itself is an art, which I, of course I think it is personally as someone who's been doing stuff like this since the nineties. And of course in the nineties, it was very, very different. Streaming is performing and it is an art. I agree, Amarana. I completely agree. And that nobody would have ever changed my mind. But I don't think that my performance art teacher would agree. You know, she didn't even think that I was allowed to feel sadness looking at a very famous piece of performance art that I guess nobody had ever felt sad about before. I also compared the very famous piece of performance art to Jim Morrison, and I think that she got a little offended. <laughs> <laughs> because people didn't consider him a performance artist, but I'll tell you what, he clearly was. He was performing art. Just because he wasn't doing it on purpose doesn't invalidate necessarily what it comes out to for the rest of us. She is a buffoon. She is. She actually, her performance art is pretty amazing. I just think that she's like, maybe not a great teacher. Kill your team and kill them dead. I forgot what I was saying before that. Um, I am going to be excavating my coffee. I have my coffee right here, but good luck. With okay, I think that's it for the orange. just have to get out of bed <laughs> oh shit look what I did <sighs> you know I wore my oil painting dress yesterday to therapy and so I'm not wearing it right now but I guess this is a new oil painting for us because I just got paint on it. <clears throat> I want white and I just want white and yellow. This yellow is too yellow. But why not wear it twice? Oh, because yesterday I wore it on the train and now it's all sweaty and I don't want to touch it. I just want to wash it before it touches me again. <sighs> yeah. Art therapy yesterday was in Union Square next to a boba place. It was very exciting. But um, it meant like a lot of time on the train, which I did not actually mind. It was not that bad. I had my knitting. But... Um, I was just so sweaty. This yellow is still too bright. I don't want to make it orangey. I just want to make it... paler. Okay, so I need more white. Maybe I'll just use what's on the brush instead of pulling a whole piece of yellow over. Mm. 
you know what? I think maybe starting with instrumental was like the wrong. Maybe we should have started with the words and moved to the instrumental. Switch songs. You say that like it's so easy to do. Art is what you make of it. You're so funny. It's true. Oh, this really needs to dry before I add anything to it because the polka dots are not happy with being touched. Okay, well, let's just set this aside so the polka dots can dry. And let's go to a different song. Good morning. Here is my face. Do you see what my hair is doing? I'm not sure what's happening here. I woke up like this. Flawless. I'm wearing the wrong glasses. I just realized. Okay. I'm going to put on Good and Red with words. And I'm going to go switch glasses. And I'll be right back. My hair is doing the same thing. And I'm honest, that is hilarious, but I think it's because we're siblings. Wrapped up in your CPAP. <laughs> Alright. So here I am. Switching glasses. Whoosh. I can suddenly see a lot better. Close up. <laughs> what a shock. Alright. I have a bunch of these um, orange tone canvases. And only one blue tone canvas left. So I'm going to save that blue tone canvas until I have a colder red. I don't, I don't need more. We need use an orange tone canvas. Okay, we're going back down. Oh, look at this beautiful gray. I don't even want to thin it out. I just want to use it. In the morning dark season, I'm just a small... Nope, I want to use this with a liner brush. I don't want to use it. Just a stretch of our gas to the I don't want this as a tattoo. But my next tattoo is Siempre Como Culebra on my foot next to the snake. Gotta fit this out to use it with a liner brush. Freaking frack! There we go. Okay, liner brush, don't let me down. No one's coming to save you. Swing through the sword at the tornado. I think the gasoline heart tattoo should go next to moon heart. It's too long unless I literally just got the words gasoline heart. Which, frankly, would be very cool.
you can't really get small words tattooed on your feet um, because your feet get a lot of friction and they they don't like I mean they don't rub off their tattoos but they do get you know the line would bleed a lot more than when you get a small tattoo somewhere else Oh, this looks like blood. Nice. All right, I'm totally vibing to the words of the song. So, Amarana, you were absolutely right that I should change it because I can. And I did, and now it's working well better. Yay, I see a smile. I have no idea what that emoji is. It looks kind of like cute one, but white. Is that an emo kid? Cheer up, emo kid. That was a meme in 2003, by the way. Like, it was delayed. <laughs> it's a dancing act. Hectus. Hectus. Oh, okay, I don't know what that is, my dude. Ecdysis. It's a dancing ecdysis. Who is that? What is that? It's a horror streamer. Oh, what is a horror streamer? And do you think that I would enjoy that? Oh, I hear your mother walking around upstairs. You must have woken her up. He does speedruns of horror games. Huh, I bet I would enjoy this. I don't have the patience to play horror games myself. They're not, they don't scare me. But I bet watching somebody else do a speed run would be very, well, I'm sure I could watch a VOD. He usually starts around midnight. My goodness, no, I am very asleep at midnight. I'm too old. It's actually not that I'm too old, it's that I have the 9 to 5 job. So I've trained myself to fall asleep early because otherwise I would never be able to go to my No one is coming to save Swing the sword that they made us a game Wow, look at how that oh I don't know if you can see it. It looks like grey blood dripping. I'm super into it. I wonder if I can darken the gray and make it dark underneath, but just continue the pattern. <clears throat> you splattered a Terminator, I did. Hey, siempre como culebra. Actually, I don't know if Enrique from Terminator 2 actually knew anything about Terminators or if he was just a freedom fighter for, I guess, Mexico? Maybe he was just hiding out in Mexico and he was from Central America, which I think would make a little bit more sense in 1982. 
No way to know. I really wanted to watch Terminator Dark Fate last night, but I wanted to watch it while sewing, and I, my brain was not awake enough for sewing, so instead I watched somebody wrap presents until they fell asleep. I'm done with this gray. In dancing blue, azul in dantrona. That is much easier to say. Azul in dantrona is what I'm gonna try adding. To this gray to see if I can get uh, a bluer gray that is nevertheless. I think I already added two colors. Can you see? <laughs> I turned it very blue. This gray now looks like the sky. Okay, how did I make this gray? I used this dark. So let me just add dark back in. My therapist told me that in one of her art classes in art school, um, they had a um, they had a colleague who would just spend like almost the whole class just mixing their colors. And to me, and I was like, oh yeah, I would totally do that. Oh, this is like this beautiful blue gray. Perfect. All right, I did it. I made a good color. I think I'm going to take a little bit of it and see if I can lighten it. This is something I love about oils that is not true for any other paint that I've tried so far, which is that you can just kind of set it aside and it will not dry. <laughs> like, um, I appreciate that about oil <laughs> so much. Okay, so I darkened it. Can you see? I, I darkened it and now I'm lightening it so that it's more of a, a so I have like a pure greeny gray and now I have a very steel gray and then I have sort of like a dark blue gray all right it's good but I, I don't want to wipe my paint off on the towel I'm gonna take it put it on my brush. <laughs> okay. I'm so, like, oil paints are comparatively not halfway that more expensive than, like, a good wash. But I'm just so, like, I don't want to waste it. You know, and I... So I have this, like, very dirty solvent. I think I'm also that I'm cleaning my brushes in, I'm going to make a clean solvent. I have my um, collection of glass yogurt cups, and so I'm going to make a very clean solvent to leave the brushes in while I work, once they're clean. Okay. Okay. Because I don't want to leave them in the dirty solvent. There we go. That does look better. We have those two. Well, if um, if you and your housemate are not using them, I'll take them. But I like I find them incredibly useful. Oh, I've just tossed those around. Um, 
was I talking about with you? Housemate uses them to clean her pens and beads. Yeah, there you go. It's that. This needs to be the. Um. Oh, I know what I'm gonna do. I should not be I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take the dark and I'm gonna make blood on the other side of the canvas. And then I'm gonna paint the medium color in between. So, <clears throat> in September, when I do my blick order, I'm going to be ordering a very full bread. I'm also going to be ordering even oil. So, like right now, I'm missing my pain of slick gothic. From Gamblin and Medio para Pintura al Oleo, Oleo, which is oil painting medium. So it's a jet, it's like basically, um, I was gonna say gasoline, it's basically Vaseline. Um, and you mix it with your oil paints and it makes them thinner and shinier. Um, and it makes them dry faster. So instead of waiting like a week and a half, you wait a few days. But, um, yes, ah, <laughs> but the traditional way to thin an oil paint is like thin seed oil, I guess. And so I'm ordering a bottle. Because I like the gel, but there's something about it. I don't know. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna just, I guess, try every option, climb every mountain, board every stream, until I find my dream. Right? That's how it goes. I think I'm missing a line. Climb every mountain, board every stream, something, 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 until you find your dream. But um. I'm just gonna, every month I'll order something different. You know, they're cheap. It's cheap. It's like $8 for a bottle of linseed oil. But if I ordered everything all at once, it would be like $100. And that would be my full art budget for the month. So, so this upcoming month, we will try linseed oil. And then, I don't know, maybe we'll try something else the next month. If I, if the linseed oil doesn't work for me or if I wish that it was doing something else. Linseed oil can also be used to clean and preserve your brushes. So it's not like it would be a waste. And I have learned that whatever I buy that I don't like, I can just give to my art therapist and they will trade me art supplies. Um, Last week I brought them stuff I didn't want and they gave me 
mixed media, heavyweight mixed media paper. <laughs> and I was like, perfect. You know what is funny is that this dark one, this looks less like blood and more like building. <laughs> right? Blood and then it's building. <laughs> Grab a bigger brush. I'm gonna actually put some solvent into this paint to make it more of a wash. Yes. When you add solvent to oil paint, it paints like watercolor, basically. Like, I love oil paint. I feel like you have the most control over it out of any painting, um, any medium I've tried for painting so far. Like, acrylics and watercolors. I feel like, I feel like oil gives you the most control and the most options. Because you can just use it like thick right out of the tube, tube, you know, or you can thin it, or you can. But like, no matter what you do, the base color is gonna stay the same. Like the pigment itself isn't gonna change. But with something like wash, um, or, or or acrylics or watercolors, like the pigment changes when you with what you do to it right so if you thin it the pigment changes if you add like the equivalent of solvent which would be water the pigment changes oh yeah feel free um to tell more friends that i like the oil um I love watercolors, like, don't get me wrong, like I love watercolors um, and gouache, but I think oils might be just my favorite because of the control that you have over what you're doing. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. You know, I got rid of that overhead camera because it screwed around with my audio and I cannot have that. Um, what I need is a camera that doesn't have its own audio built in, but they're so hard to find for cheap. And I've just sort of like lost my interest in spending my money on it when I could be spending my money on art supplies and buying my baby siblings cups of coffee and you know especially because I don't maybe I stream like this once a week you run out of sight out of start I was just to buy that's what you like to learn to see in the stars. Just a small desire. My therapist would like me to make my own oil paints. And I am seriously considering it. But I think that's like after I like start my new job and get used to it and you know, like, that's it's like a project for next calendar year. That would be so cool. Yeah, I agree. But, I mean, they were kind of making fun of me because of how I'm always like, no, I need more control than that. No, I need more control than that. And they were like, well, you know what? You should learn how to make your own paint because that is the most control that you can have over your paint. I'm not sure that they expected me to be like, oh, you're right. <laughs> so, 
And I really like those ASMR videos of people making paint. Although I don't know where I would do it because it takes up so much space. And I think that your mother would like murder me if I took over the entire kitchen just to make paints for like a week. Okay, so this first layer of this painting I think is almost done. I'm just gonna, I, I'm gonna stop trying to be so perfect and precious about it because it clearly is this the painting that needs multiple layers. It's not gonna do the next day. We'll pull it out the next time I stream like this. Probably next Sunday morning, right? Uh, I wish that I, I don't know what I, where am I? Oh, it's over there. I kind of want to pull out my sketchbook and show you the no one's coming to save you rainbow that I made. Let me know if you want to see that because I will grab my sketchbook from the other side of the room and show you. Yes, okay. So I have finished this painting now for the moment. I've finished this layer. And so I'm gonna set it aside. Brush. I always want to see your art. You're so sweet. I don't know why you're that sweet. I don't know how you ended up with such a little sweetheart given your family. Must just be like a parent in you that has a sweetheart. Okay, this is my sketchbook. It's so big, it does not fit in the frame. <laughs> it's um, 11 by 14. This is not, this is the front of the sketchbook, but I started using it backwards. <laughs> Metro Station. Hi, hi. Hello, Metro Station. So see my sketchbook says Siempre Como Culebra on it. Just in case. <laughs> so let's see. I'm not really doing a sketchbook tour, but I want to show you the detail ones. No one is coming to save you. In a rainbow! Siempre como culebra means always with the snake. And in Terminator 2, or always with snake, but, you know, always with the snake. Um, in Terminator 2, when they go into Mexico and they look for Enrique, um, they look for en Enrique, they're at, the, it's like sort of two-thirds through the movie, and they, um, she, she like hugs Enrique and she's like, Enrique, como esta? You know, and they say to each other, siempre como culebra, which is like their code phrase or whatever. And I, oh, thank you for the follow. Um, I'm glad that Terminator 2 was like inspiring. <laughs> so anyway, um, in performance art class, um, we had to, we had 10 minutes to make something that we would want our younger selves to know. And so this is what I made. And it's acrylic. And it says, no one is coming to save you. Because gosh, I wish somebody had told me that when I was a kid. 
Okay. So here's the question. Should I make another painting based on the vibes of this song? Or should we switch songs to like Track 29 by Christian King or uh, Ghost in Your Stereo, like another Midnight Song. I have like Ghost in Your Stereo and Jason and Days of Thunder. Love is a four letter word. I hope it hurts. Uh, okay, so vote. Uh, Metro Station and Amaranth. Or whoever is here. Um, what song should be next? Track 29 or another midnight song? Should I play track 29? Does anybody but me know what song that is? I'm going to play track 29 right now. I picked good and red, so I'll leave it to Metro. Okay, Metro, it just has to be a, a song that won't get DMCA uh, and that I can find on Spotify. So if you want to pick something that I've never heard before or that wasn't my that wasn't in my options, that's totally fine. I'll find it on Spotify. I know track 29, who do you think raised me? I know, Emeron. <laughs> but Metro probably has never heard it. You can't just go around assuming that everybody knows about Christian Kane's singing career. <laughs> Deep cuts from 2004 or whenever it is. Okay, while well, you guys decide, I am going to wash a piece of paper. Um, I'm going to make a lot of noise. And I think I'm going to do it with India Red. And a lot of white. Thanks a lot. I did not hit repeat one, so now my whole playlist is going to go. That's okay, because nobody cares when this is washing. Actually, if we're just washing, we are going to listen to Days of Thunder because love is a four letter word. And I hope it's the video for this song is um, weird and hilarious. So, can you see what I'm doing? Amaranth washing is just, um, you probably know this from Torchan, but it's just like laying down a color that you're going to use as your base color instead of using um, instead of using white the white of the paper 
and it doesn't even need to be even, so I'm just not gonna cover it up. Yes, I'm Aranis. I figured that you would know that I wanted to make sure. Movie or hit. Oh my god. I think this actually is the first Midnight song that you ever played for me because it has the saxophone in it and you're like, saxophone! And the girl says it's a I'm gonna watch two pieces of paper and then I am gonna pick a song if nobody else has picked one. That's how it's gonna go. So what I did was I laid down like a kind of thicker layer of paint and now I'm using uh, I'm using solvent to pull some of that thicker layer over. This is not a wash brush, this is a filbert, a size 4 filbert. Filberts are my favorite brushes though. I don't want to use a wash brush. I want to use a filbert for everything. I want to use a filbert brush or a liner brush. I don't For me, the thing about washing the paper too is that it's going to inspire the painting that goes on top of it. Because you see how it's going from dark to light, like I'm definitely going to be inspired by that when it's done to paint. So it's like a gift to future me. One, one more page of washing, and then I'm gonna now wash with. Oh, you know what I'm gonna wash with? I'm gonna wash with that orange that I made. I'm gonna take this. And I'm gonna mix it with the gel. Honestly, the Galkid gel smells more than the solvent is supposed to be I think stick with Days of Thunder. If it's too late, I have already used Days of Thunder for washing. So please pick a different song. What about Jason? Could you Jason? We could make a bunch of paintings inspired by Jason Todd. Vampires. I don't have that song. I'll have to find it on Spotify. I know it's there. It's just not on my playlist that I listen to every stream. Look at how nice this orange is washing. Okay, look. What I would like to listen to on stream is just good and red over and over again. So the fact that there are any other songs, maybe like, this is like two. Actually, sorry about fair. 
So what I would like to listen to on stream is just Days of Thunder and Track 29 and It's Time by Noodle over and over again. <laughs> the fact that there are any other um, songs on my playlist at all is like a testament. I'll send it via Discord. Amaron is 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 Vampire's uh, Midnight song a song by the Midnight because I'll just have it on Spotify. Look at this wash. I feel like I mixed a really nice orange. And I'm glad that I'm losing all of it. Here's my thing. Okay, but now I can just click the link and add it to the playlist. Okay. That's true. It's not true, because for whatever reason, it just opened up in my stupid browser as a YouTube video. I'm not happy about that. Anyway, it's on Endless Summer with Jason, right? So I'm just gonna, I'm just right there, it's fine. Alright. Vampires. Vampires will never hurt you. Oh, I love your hair. Yeah, Cupcake has great hair, yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> awesome. I have anime villain hair. You see how it's like red and then it changes into like a purple and black? It's because I'm an anime villain. But I am not the Sasuke. Not the Sasuke. Okay. Canvases. Shit. What did I do with my canvases? Oh, they're over here, underneath my fist. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I have to move the camera. You would never know that I actually did take my meds this morning. I'm so scattered. Okay, here we go. Camera going down. I need to remember that I cannot use that orange. I wonder if I put all four of these together and painted with them together and then separated them. Let me get a piece of tape. I'm gonna tape them. Oh, I know this song. Follow your art heart, yeah. Okay. 
you can tell that like these canvases are all made differently because they don't fit together at all. That's okay. I hear your mother walking around upstairs, I'm around it. Well, I, but, but I don't think she's coming down. It's still like very early for her. She likes to stay in bed and read and play games. I just can't imagine that. I don't like to stay in bed. Although I'm in bed all night. Like I go to I go to bed like very early so that I can lie in bed and read more read and cheap stuff. But we just like to be in bed at different times. Alright. What am I gonna do? Why is this not dry? No, it's dry. I'm gonna wipe off my palette. What color am I starting with? Is there the green? Obviously green. Okay. So I'm gonna take this giant. I almost put it right down on the canvas. I wonder if I have a palette knife just hanging around because this actually isn't cold. Okay, that was funny. I do have a palette knife just hanging around. <laughs> We are just gonna mix this with a palette knife. We need some blue. I have a metal palette knife like on my wish list of things that I want from Blick. But for now, we'll just do it with this plastic cheap one. It's so funny because my art therapist was like, I don't know if you're gonna like painting, don't buy it. Don't buy like expensive supplies and I swear to you like my cheap supplies came and I was like these are cheap and don't work in the way that I want them to work. <laughs> this is so like funny and snotty. Okay so what I'm gonna do now is white over here and blue over here and I'm gonna mix up two different versions of the green. And then I still have a little tiny bit of green in the middle that is just the green. I don't know why I'm thinking green for vampires, but this song doesn't seem really about vampires. The way that, like, a, um, you know, um, well, I'm on, like, what's the name of that band that I'm thinking of? I'm sure you know. I'm, I'm waiting for a sign from one of my kind. Like, all of their songs are vampires. Even Tomorrow Wendy, which is about eight, is about vampires. Concrete Blonde. Yeah, there we go. Jinx. Concrete Blonde. Yes. Exactly who it is. Okay, so I added more yellow and more white, and if you look at this beautiful, beautiful, you see how beautiful this, like, yellowy green is? It's this beautiful yellowy green, and then we're gonna, now we're gonna work on the bluer green. It's gonna be darker, it's gonna be, like, a little 
creepy, a creepy green, the kind of green that you might paint a plant that's going to eat you. And now I want to take some of my ready, red, red. God, I wish I had a full red. Okay. This is not going to go down on the palette the way that, I mean, on the canvas the way it looks on the palette. It's just very annoying. This is the... These two reds are the only colors I have that do not look the same on the canvas as they look on the palette, and I find that so frustrating. Corey! Oh my gosh! Of course it's you, Corey, because you're using the same life nonsense handbook. Um, I am painting based on how I vibe to the songs that have been picked by the viewers. And this song is called Vampires, and it's by The Midnight, which is a band that I love. And it was picked by Amaranis, who is here in the chat, who is my youngest sibling. And I am currently mixing up a brownish black. I couldn't remember what my handle was. Oh yeah, your handle is like that. Um, and so I'm making a brownish black and some greens. I think the brownish black is some yellow, actually. I just want to use up all of the colors that I, all of the paint that I squirted out this morning. I feel like probably Amaranis picked this song because it has like intense guitar, not guitar, this is the saxophone, intense saxophone. Okay, so I now have four different colors and three. I have a brown green, a blue green, a true, like a sap green, and a yellow green. I'm pretty proud of myself that I mixed all these myself. I kind of want to take a picture and send it to my therapist and be like, I mixed these colors. So, I'm going to set this up. Actually, I want my gel. And I'm using Galka gel to thin the, um, to thin the paints so that they dry faster and I and I have my odorless solvent. It's literally just called odorless solvent. Uh, my therapist calls it terpenoid. I don't know. I don't know what it is. It doesn't say terpenoid on this. It just says odorless solvent. Its slow evaporation rate is 1 16th that of mineral terps. And its low toxicity combines to provide a painting environment that is 16 times 3 equals 48 times less toxic than turpentine. So, and it works. It cleans my brushes. It's true. Amarana, is it true? It's true that you picked this for the saxophone? I appreciate that. It's so 1980, whatever, or. Okay. So I'm gonna paint this thing with a filbert brush because I did the last one with only a liner brush. It's too early for a mask. Hash fair. Okay. I'm gonna start with the blue green. That's my favorite. Oh, you can't see the palette. Okay, there we go. The shadow people dance and truth is gonna need more. Okay. Oh, just the paint from my fingers is already on. Okay. So, Corey, the other thing that I did is um, I have four four by four canvases that I've taped together so that I can paint on all of them and then separate them. And I tape them together in a square 
so that they'll look weird if I line them up in a row. I did. And I'm gonna start here. So fun, yes, I agree. I'm like, desperately trying to have fun while I, so the assignment from my therapist was to buy a bunch of small canvases, fill them all up, and then put them together into a project. And, uh, but I'm not supposed to think about what I want that project to be. I'm supposed to fill them up and then put them all together like on the wall of my bedroom or something so that I can look at them and see what they look like, I guess. So it's, it's like been really interesting so far to see how like different they all are. But all of them are inspired by songs. So. But not by like the actual songs, just by the song vibes. We're, we're vibing. We're vibing. Okay, that kind of looks like a bat. Or like a vulva. But I like it. Saxophones make me want to paint crack. I'm not sure, like something that will crack or into a crack or, I feel like saxophones fill up all the spaces. Does that make sense? It doesn't have to make sense, I guess. I don't know why I asked if it makes sense. But can you vibe with that feeling? I am doing watercolors. I was doing watercolors inspired by song at my cottage this week. I would love to hear more about that, Corey, because I saw some of your work on Twitter earlier, and I didn't get a chance to really sit down and look at it, but, like, some of it just looked so, like, amazing, so if you felt like DMing me or whatever on Twitter to, like, show me more and tell me more, I would really love to hear more. I have been watching your, like, artwork on Twitter with, like, incredible uh, fascination as you like take stuff and I'm like this is awesome <laughs> um, as you see hopefully I've like expressed that in a way that is understandable because I think it's very cool what you've done like the the drawings that you did based on emoji I thought was like so fun And it just seems like you're having like a lot of, I'm going to say the word fun again, but it just seems like you're having a lot of fun with it and just like using your imagination and being creative, which is something that I like personally have a really hard time with. So I'm like super jealous that you can do it. I had a blast doing those. Oh, yay, I'm so glad. Amaranth. Corey is also life nonsense on um, Twitter. So, fun is the right word. Okay, good, because that's what, you know, they look. All right, we're gonna take the paint off the brush and go into maybe more gel. All right, so that was our blue green, and I want yellow green now. And here, brown, green. Art should be fun. I mean, I agree with that to a point. Sometimes it is work, but, and it can be enjoyable without being fun, right? I don't know if it's, it's been a real process, but I found that making art is so healing for me. Oh my God, me too. It just makes me feel like I'm working out a lot of stuff that way. I think this is another painting that's going to need like multiple layers because it's 
not going to be completely just green. I think it's going to need some stuff on top of the green. All right, I'm obviously going to need to come back in with a liner to actually get close to the other. Corey, what made you start doing art for healing purposes? Like, what inspired that? Why is there hair on my canvas? Hair canvas is for sewing, not for painting. I guess it could be for painting. Alright, so obviously I'm going to come back and paint over all of this yellow green in this corner, but this just needed to be yellow green right now. I guess that's the good thing about doing these on Sunday mornings is that painting is going to have a whole week to dry. It's also like the most frustrating thing about oils is how long they take to dry and it's the forced patience. But it's good for me because I'm practicing patience. In January, I decided I wanted to learn to draw, and as I kept going and letting go of the need to be perfect, I started to realize how much I loved it. Now I spread the gospel of art therapy to anyone who will listen. Oh, Corey, that's awesome. I, too, am a real believer in art therapy, and that is why I picked the therapist that I have now, because they are an art therapist, and they just do art all the time together. And then they're like, can you explain this painting to me and how it makes you feel? And I'm like, I really don't want to. <laughs> I had my whole family doing watercolor. That's awesome. I really want my mom to paint with me. I think, like, in addition to it being fun for us, I just said it would be really good for her. I haven't convinced her quite yet, but I think I'm getting there. I just want her to have a hobby. Like a fun hobby that we can share. Besides watching Doctor Who together, which is also fun. I guess I'm going to use my angle brush for the brown. Mix that gel in. So, for your whole family were at the cottage this week? That's extremely Canadian, and I love it. I led them through a little jellyfish tutorial I saw on TikTok. It was very chill and lovely. That sounds awesome. That sounds like incredibly, incredibly fun. That is the kind of thing I would want to do at a cottage with my family. Some 
something that we can all do together, but that we all do by ourselves. <laughs> that is not competitive. Technically not the whole family, my brother had to work, but yes, it was extremely Canadian. Yeah. Parts of um, the parts of the United States that are kind of like the most Canadian are also the parts of the United States where people go to cottages. So like New Hampshire, where a lot of the people who are there are from Quebec, and like, um, and then of course like you have like Michigan where everybody is obsessed with hockey, so it's kind of Canadian, and they all have like their lake cottages and stuff. I would love to hear more about your art therapist. My art therapist is amazing. Their name is Alba. Um, they bring a dog with them when we meet in person. And it's supposed to be like a therapy dog, like an emotional support dog for the clients. But my experience is that Kelda ends up holding the dog and like cuddling it. Her, her name is Jean, um, more than I do. like. Um, because the things that people say, I guess, really upset her. She, them, she, they're, the dog is not very sensitive, but Kelda is very sensitive. Um, and, um, Kelda is an artist who did a lot of, they, they do, they, they know a ton of different mediums, but they do mostly work in, like, acrylic. Um, I'm trying to think of like what else I can say about Kelda that is just like, I just really love them. I love the way that they do therapy with me. They're so validating and they always have this like perspective that I've never thought about or that I've like blown off <laughs> that they want me to like pay more attention to and they, um, We do like we do two sessions a week. We do one remote and one in person. And uh, they give me a lot of choices, but not in a way, not in a way where I feel like they're trying to like manipulate me, but more in a way where they're trying to make sure that they have my consent for what we're gonna do which I think is like it's a very different feeling than feeling like I can't answer a question correctly because both answers are wrong or whatever and I'm just supposed to like guess what's supposed to be happening which I hate that's so wonderful a good connection with your therapist is clutch absolutely and I since coming back to New York from Maryland I had a really hard time finding therapist that I could connect with. Kelda is really the first one. And of course, like, part of that is because, like, Kelda is not recommending that I do pathway therapy, and Kelda is not, like, using hurtful words to describe me. And why is my mother around upstairs? Uh, and also, I picked them in part because they are trans non-binary, uh, like people are kind of queer. I wanted somebody who would like understand or at least have informed perspectives on those experiences. Um, because it's like really hard to talk to like a cis straight person about gender and queer relationships. <gasps> a curve, a curve, a curve, a curve in my Geometry. Why is the curve here? It just happened. Changes in a dark room left your stated question. Frosted window panes of cheap champagne. 
I feel you so hard. I thought you might, Corey. A curve! <laughs> I love the curve. Good. Okay. I, I'm really feeling this curve. It's so funny because my drawing, my paintings are usually either very squared off or all curved. You vibed too hard. I did. So it's, it's funny that this painting has squares and a curve. All right, let's wipe this brush off and move it from the brown. This is much more, see on the palette, it looks greener than on the, I told you, the stupid reds that I got just don't have a true, they, their the colors don't come through on the palette and it's very hard. So this liner is, I'm looking at my angle brushes. I have one that is a four and one that is a quarter inch, so it's a five. Right. I'm going to use the slightly bigger one for this back green. I vibed too hard. I did vibe too hard with the, but I like it. Oh, that's too much. So now it's too thin. Oh well. I'll just have to mix this color up again and make a second. Corey, are you doing any art this weekend? Or are you like taking a break after being in the, at the cottage? Forget like I forget that like oils are so different from like watercolors or gouache or whatever where you don't have to pick up the paint that is the error you just make another layer and paint right over it and it doesn't show through or anything. I have a project on the go that currently only exists in my brain. I took a bunch of reference pics of the cottage so I'll be working on concept sketches. That sounds extremely exciting. Um, I love when projects are only in my brain and I like conceptualize them for days or weeks or months before I get started and then they just like flow right out of me. That's how I write. Um, like I write the whole story in my head and then I just and that's why I can write so fast once I actually am putting words down on the page. I'm like, oh, 16,000 words in a day, no problem. It's because I already know what's supposed to be there. Is that how your art feels when you're conceptualizing in your head and then putting it down? You're just like, oh, I already know what's supposed to be here. I'm just going. Go, go, go. Or does it work differently? Guys, I've got some more curves here. It's a little bit weird. I could never keep that many thoughts in my brain. I think, um, oh, well, if that's all that's in your brain, which is what happens when I'm writing, uh, it's, it's easier to keep it in your brain, but then you forget to like eat and feed the kids. So I don't actually recommend it. I'm not sure this is my first real project. I'm not sure what you mean by real. Actually, I think I know what you mean by real, but like, my dude, 
your other stuff is also real. I'm just gonna remind you of that. But this is, sounds like your first like very big project, maybe. Okay, I'm gonna put some of I'm gonna take some of this like yellow and mix it with the darker blue. I want more blue. Where's my palette? My other stuff wasn't project. Is that because it wasn't like multi step? It was just like one thing. <gasps> Look at that. Yes. Can you see what's happening here? I took the sap green and mixed it with like more blue and a little bit of orange instead of being like super brown it's now much more green so, this is the first thing i'm planning out with this specific goal in mind usually i just sit and do whatever happens oh that makes perfect sense then to think of it as like a project instead of you know whatever happens makes perfect sense to me i completely understand I think I have a hard time planning out my art just because whatever every time I like conceptualize what I want something to look like, it never ever looks that way on the paper or the canvas or whatever. And so I get like very angry and frustrated. So I just stop trying to do that. And I have hence this project, which is song vibes. And I feel like this is the most successful one of the day because even though it does need another couple of layers, I think you can already feel the vibes of the saxophone in it. Do you feel saxophone vibes from this? It's a birthday gift for my mom, so obviously I want to see a baby, but I'm sure she will love it, however. Oh, she totally will. I'm valid. Thank you. You do! You do feel saxophone vibes. Yay! I totally feel the saxophone vibes. I think, I think the curves were really necessary for saxophone vibes. It makes me wonder what I would end up with if I was listening to, like, Bruce Springsteen like those 80s songs of his that all have like intense intense sax um i think i would end up with a lot of curves and maybe some circles okay so i still have paint and i don't want to just wipe the paint away i want i'm gonna put this aside to dry and then come back and do one more painting just to Set. I bought some acrylic panels to paint on, so I'll be able to take my designs to back and trace, which I think will help a lot. Yes, I have found that if I am sketching something and I want to paint it, it's really, like, I end up putting it over, like, carbon paper and tracing it, because I'm not confident enough that, my, that I can repeat my sketch. And I don't want to like be erasing if I, especially if I've laid down a wash on a canvas or something, I don't want to be like erasing my pencil. I want to just like have what I want to do. And you know what? I think that that is like a totally valid way of, even though people at DeviantArt would not agree, I think it's a super valid way of making sure that you get your sketch Pencil is so much more forgiving than paint. It's true. I watched this very interesting um, oil painter on YouTube who she does a wash 
and then she makes a grid with pencil which you can do with um, oils right because the oil will cover the pencil and then instead of sketching in pencil she does an underpainting in a sort of like neutral brown color that she can paint over but of course that's when you're doing like seven layers of oil painting so my watercolors this week were to help build my paint confidence oh i love that that makes so much sense i do a lot of um when especially with watercolors i do a lot of brush control exercises especially if i sit down and i don't know what to paint but i want to be painting brush control exercises are perfect for that and they always end up looking really interesting okay Amalona, are you still there are you getting coffee everybody you're gonna see my face again Hello. this is my hair I'm gonna pick a different um, song because I wanna do one more painting. And I just don't know what song. Corey, I don't know if you're familiar with things, songs that you can uh, play on the screen. Looking very cute. I woke up like this. I don't know how many times today I'm gonna make that joke, but. I do feel super cute today. Um, so I need a song that I can play on stream that I will paint to. Oh, what about Hell's Heroes by Empires? I wanted to get coffee, none of all music, but didn't happen. Oh, I'm honest. So sorry, honey. You'll get up eventually, because you'll get coffee before D and D. All right, let's paint to Hell's Heroes by Empires. This is their demo version of it that I am not supposed to have, but I do because mm -hmm. I'm awesome and they like me for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. 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 done watching me paint, you should watch um, that part of the matrix. Maybe you have to get even closer to the really get up. That always works for me. I'm like, oh yeah, Trinity can do that part. Get up. Get up, Trinity. Get up. Alright, I want this yellow. Understanding is that this song is like for Cobain, <laughs> which I, I find very interesting. There is no way Sean Van Fleet ever listened to Nirvana, but the other Van Fleet fans are. I have so many thoughts about Empires. It's been so many years, and I still am like, you guys, I just want to talk about how stupid Sean Van Fleet is and how wonderful Tom Conrad is forever. Okay, I actually want to add white to this. There's the light. There's the light. And yellow. I'm going to add a lot of white. A little yellow. Sometimes I get lost at night. 
Sometimes I throw up in the evening. Sometimes I throw up in the night, in the night, in the night, the night, in the night, in the night. From the things underneath my heart that are buried alive. Okay. I wonder what it would be like to finger paint with oil. I got the oil all over my fingers. I don't want to finger paint. Alright. So I'm going to mix this like pale yellowy brown. Look at that. It looks kind of like I'm frosting a chocolate cake. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. All right. I just love this song so much, even though. This is a filbert size four. I just love the space. I love how it's not totally flat. It's like rounded up the tip, but it's not a round brush. Oh shoot, I got oil paint all over my face. Okay, here we go, you guys. We're gonna help heroes in brown. I have to go start my day, but it was so lovely to spend this time with you. Corey, I feel the same. Thank you so much for joining. Maybe I'll see you next week at the same time. Have a wonderful day. this beautiful red brown is making me very happy even though it's like one of my least favorite colors sometimes i get lost in the morning sometimes i get lost at night sometimes i throw up in the evening sometimes i throw up in the night in the night in the night the night in the night in the night from the things underneath my heart that are buried
It's so interesting that today I mostly did, like last week the paintings were very complete. This week these paintings all need at least one more layer of paint, but I think we're going to be doing them again next week. It's like this painting clearly needs yellow and orange on top of it. But of course with oils, they take so long to dry. I can't just wait a few minutes and come back to it with some watercolors. I think I'm done for the day with the screaming. I think you're the only one left. So I want to say goodbye to you. And thank you for coming. And I'll see you maybe next Sunday morning to finish these. So, this was nice. I'm so glad that you think so. Let's do it again next week. Here's my health heroes first layer. And um, I'll see you for D and D later. Thanks for joining me. I love you. You like it? Okay. Okay. Um, I'll see you and Shrike for D and D later. Get out of bed, okay? Get yourself some. I love you.